Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adla and today we'll be talking about books that I have ghosts and like paranormal things about them. Let's get going. My first book is The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden, January 1918. Laura Iron was a revered field nurse until she was routed and discharged from the medical corps, leaving behind a brother still fighting in Flanders. Now home in Halifax, Canada, she receives a warning of Freddy's death in combat, along with his personal effects, but something doesn't make sense. Determined to uncover the truth, Laura returns in Belgium as a volunteer at a private hospital. Soon after arriving, she hears whispers about haunting trenches, and a strange hoteler whose wine gives soldier the gift of oblivion, could Freddy have escaped the battlefield only to fall prey to something or someone else? My next book is Wake to Hollow by Gabby Kalana. Forget the ghost maker, it's real. Live people you should fear. Tragedy has brought Michaela Burgos back to her hometown of Sleepy Hollow. It's been six years since she chose to live with her father in Miami instead of her eccentric mother. And now her mother is dead. This time a second wind did not let you go. Sleepy Hollow may be famous for its fabled headless horsemen, but the town is real. So are its prejudices and hatred targeting Minka's family as outsiders. But ghostly voices carry on the wind, whispering that her mother's death was based on hate. Not an accident at all. With the help of two very different guys who pull at the heart and in many different ways, Michaela must awaken the hidden secret of Sleepy Hollow before she meets her mother's fate. Find the secret. Find the answers. Unless, of course, the answers find you first. My next book is Small Angels by Lauren Owen. When Chloe, when Chloe turns the key to Small Angels, the nuts nestled at the edge of Mark Beggar Woods where she is to be married. She is braced for cobwebs and dust. While she doesn't expect that the villagers' concerned faces, her fiancé's remoteness, or the nagging voice in her head that whispers to her, to her of fears she didn't even know she had, something in the woods is beginning to stir. To creep closer to the sleeping houses, something that should have been banished long ago. Whatever it is, it's getting stronger and pretending it's not there. Won't keep the morning or the village or Chloe safe. My next book is Rules for Vanishing by K. Alice Marshall. Once a year, the path appears in the forest and Lizzie Gallows beckons, who is brave enough to find her and who won't make it out of the woods. It's been exactly one year since Sarah's sister, Becca, disappeared and high school life has far from settled back to normal. With her sister gone, Sarah doesn't know whether her former friends no longer like her or are scared of her, and the days of eating alone at lunch have started to blend together. When a mysterious text message invites Sarah and her estranged friends to play the game and find local ghost legend Lucy Gallows, Sarah is sure this is the only way to find Becca before she's lost forever. And even though she's hardly spoken with them for a year, Sarah finds herself deep in the darkness of the forest, her friends and the cameras following her down the path. Together, they will have to draw on all of their strengths to survive. The moment is really forgiving, and no one will be the same on the other side. My next book is also from the same author, which is called The Devil by Kate Alice Marshall. Everyone has heard the story of The Devil. The river that runs behind the outward school is only a few feet across and seemingly placid, but beneath the surface, the waters are deep and vicious. It's sad that no one who has fallen in has ever survived. Ann White knows that isn't true. Six years ago, she saw Beth and Fournier fall into the narrow and live. Delphi now lives in a careful isolation sealed off from the world. Even a single drop of unpurified water could be deadly to her. And no one but Aiden has an, any idea why. Aiden has never told anyone why she saw or spoken to Delphine since. But now unable to cover her tuition, she has to make her expenses will be paid in return for serving as a living companion to Delphine. Aiden finds herself drawn to the strange and mysterious girl, and the two of them begin to unravel each other's secrets. Then Aiden discovers what happened to the last girl who lived with her when she was found half drowned on dry land. Suddenly, Eden is waking up to wet footprints, tracking to the end of, of her bed. The sound of rain on the windows where the skies are clear and a ghostly silhouette. In her doorway, something is haunting Delphine, and now it's coming for Eden too. 
My next book is The Library of the Dead by T.L. Hutu. When a child goes missing in Edinburgh's darkest streets, young Mopat investigates. She will need to call on Zimbabwean magic as well as the Scottish pragmatism to hunt down clues. But as shadows lengthen, will the hunter become the hunted? When ghost talks, she will listen. Mopo dropped out of school to become a ghost talker. Now she speaks to Edinburgh's dead, carrying messages to the living. A ghost got to earn a living, and it seems harmless enough. Until that is, the dead whispers that summons the raging children, leaning them husk, empty of joy and life. And to Mopo's patch, so she feels on about to investigate. But what she learns will change her world. My next book is I'm Not Supposed to Be in the Dark by Miss M. Nielsen. 17-year-old Aria Caetano dreams of ghosts. She used to see them too, but thanks to a special theme built by her grandfather, Aria's connection to the spirit world has been severed, until a decades old rose bird suddenly dies across the street, convincing Aria that something supernatural is happening in her neighborhood. She aches to investigate it, but the rose bird sits on her ex-best friend Derek Johnson's front lawn, and she can't question him because he hates her now. Aria doesn't know what drove them apart years ago, but she does know Derek's been acting strange for weeks, sneaking out in the dead of night to who knows where. Then, ten days after the rush bush dies, Derek begins speaking to her again, at least Aria thickens him, and then she discovers there's a ghost inside of Derek that will take his life, if it doesn't find what it's searching for. As Aria and Derek race to uncover the mystery, a non kind of magic takes them by surprise, love. But Aria has to decide how far she is willing to go to save Derek, especially when helping the ghost means tapping into whatever the tea has buried inside of her. My next book is Half Your Shadows by Darcy Coates. Sophie's world the shadow when disaster bankrupts the family. She's still reeling from the news when she's offered an unexpected solution. Mr. Argenton, a wealthy stranger, asks for hand in marriage. Marrying Mr. Argenton will restore her family's fortune and save them from scandal, but continues Sophie to her life in Northwood, a vast and unnaturally dark mansion situated hours from civilization. Sophie struggles to adjust to her new position as mistress over the desolate house. Mr. Argenton's relatives are cold, and Mr. Argenton himself is keeping secrets. Even worse, the house is more than it seems. The next book is House of Roots and Women. It's the number two book from House of Salt and Sorrow, and this is by Evan A. Craig. In the manor by the sea, one sister is still cursed. Despite dreams of adventures far beyond the silent shores, 17 new and vanity farmers has remained at her family's estate high moon with her older sister Camille, while their sisters have scattered across Arcania. When the sister Mercy sends word that the Duchess of Bloom, wife of a celebrated botanist, is interested in having Vanity paint a portrait of her son, Alexander, Vanity jumps at the chance, but Camille won't allow it. Forced to reveal the secret she's kept for years, Camille tells Vanity the truth one day. Vanity is still seeing ghosts, she just doesn't know it. Stunned, Vanity flees high more that night, and with no one else to turn, makes her way to Bloom, at first, she is captivated by the lush, luxurious landscape and is quickly drawn to charming, witty, and possibly handsome Alexander Lawrence, and soon, to her surprise, a woman's blossoms. But not long before Vanity is plagued with nightmares, and the darker sun and bloom begins to show through its sweetly, sickly sweet facade. My next book is The House of Little Bones by Beverly Lee. He thought he was untouchable. Damon Lansdowne, as the British horror writer and supernatural skeptic, is used to basking in the glow of the press, until a hastily snapped photo hits the headlines and makes his affair with his publisher's stands public. When Damon finds himself in Bone Hollow, a house with a glass wall overlooking a wild and desolate moor, his only concern is writing his next bestseller to bury his misdeeds in the past. But something stirs beneath the earth. Something bound to the land, something determined to take everything from him. My next book is Find Him When You Left Him Dead by Kirsten Simones. At dawn he'll be gone and you'll be here forever. Kirsten and so this four years ago five kids started a game, not all of them survived. 
Now at the end of the senior year of high school, the survivors, Owen, Madeline, Emerson, and Dax, have now reunited from one strange and terrible. They have been summoned by the ghost of Ian, the friend they left for dead. Together they return to the place where the friendship ended with one Ian, with one fine Ian, and bring him home. So they restart the never game they never finished, an innocent card matching challenge called Milo, a game without instructions. As soon as they begin, they drag it out of the reality and into an eerie hellscape of Japanese underworlds, more horrifying than even the darkest folk, folk tales that Owen's grandmother told him. There, they meet Shinigami, an old wise woman who explains the rules. They have one night to complete seven challenges or they'll be stuck in this world forever. My next book is Don't Tell a Soul by Kristen Miller. People say the house is cursed. It plays on the weakest and young women as favorite victims. In Luth, they're called the Dead Girls. All Brad wanted, wanted was to disappear from her old life, her family's past, and from the scandal that continues to haunt her. The only place left to go is Luth, the tiny town on the Hudson River where her uncle James has been renovating an old mansion. When James is haunted by his own ghost months earlier, his beloved wife died in the fire and the people say was set by her daughter. The tragedy left James a shell of the man brand new and destroyed the half the house he had so lovingly restored. The manor is creepy and so are the locals. The people of Luke doesn't want outsiders like Bram in the town. And with each passing day, she discovering that the rumors that they spread are just as disturbing as the secrets they hide. Most frightening of all are the legends they tell about the dead girls. Those whose lives are cut short in the very house Bram now calls home. My next book is Dead Men's Float by Sean Souls. Sometimes the truth hurts, sometimes it even kills. Seven years ago, Sam watched a friend drown. The water and the fact that Sam, Sam couldn't save her has haunted her ever since, but what she didn't see that day was the hand that had reached out of her friend, wrenching her beneath the water. Now as Sam gets ready for Varsity's pre-season on the school swim team, she vows once again not to let the fear of the water bring her down into its depths. But when the upperclassman takes the girls to the abandoned neighborhood pool called the graveyard, for the yearly hazing ritual, a seemingly harmless prank will set off a catastrophic chain of events. It will unleash a spirit, a ghost that has unfinished business both in the pool and outside of it, intent on finding its killer. My next book is, the, is called The Dead Ghost of Hysteria Hall by Kate Allender. Delia's new house isn't just a house. Long ago, it was the Parents Institute for the care and collection of troubled females, an insane asylum nicknamed Hysteria Hall. However, many of the inmates were not insane, just the fun and small world, kind of like Delia herself, but the house still wants to keep troubled, girls locked away. So in the most horrifying way, Delia gets trapped, and that's when she learns that the house is also haunted. Next book is The Dark Becomes Her by Julie Ireland. And this is basically a good story for Vancouver's Chinatown who gets caught up in an epic battle of monsters, power and destiny as she fights to save her sister from possession by an unknowingly evil spirit. So, that's exciting. And this is like a Taiwanese Canadian teenager, so that's really exciting. My next book is The Library of Shadows by Rachel Moon. Radcliffe Prep, the third most haunted school in the country where a student disappears, isn't uncommon and no one dares to stay in the library after dark. And Estee Logano enrolls with the hopes of finding her dead father. Not literally, of course. She doesn't believe in ghosts. Going to her dad's school just seemed like a best home and figured out who he was. But then Esther meets Mattel, who is maybe probably definitely a real ghost and annoyingly one at that. When Mattel frames Esty for the theft of a rare book from the library's secret spire and then vanishes, Esty will have to track him down almost being expelled or leaving Radcliffe early, just like her father did. And those are all the books about ghosts, and let me know if you plan to read any of them, and let me know what's your favorite ghost book, and please like, comment, and subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!